what it do surprise shoddy so um this is a word that god gave me on january the 9th um i had tried to record it that day and then i decided not to and then i kind of just wrote it down um later that night but interestingly enough i could feel i can feel myself being fought concerning this one like even now i feel like what I dreamt, like they was trying to drug me in the spirit. And when I woke up this morning, I felt like that. Like what in the world? So y'all just pray for me. I'm also kind of laughing about it though, because why Why are y'all always coming for me like this? <laughs> That's how I'm starting to feel like this. Give it up. Give it up. Okay. So let's actually do the word though. The dream before God even let me like remember all of it before the Holy Spirit called it back to my remembrance. So make sure you're doing that. Like I really be rolling over in the middle of the night praying against witchcraft and all types of stuff. And then I wake up that little boy on Monsters Inc., which I just recently watched both movies. It's me. Like I know I'd be waking up like Okay, so for real, let's get into the work. <sighs> the gospel is timeless. It will never get old. It will never be played out. So a lot of us, we may find we sometimes hear the same word or you hear the word, but it's deeper. It's deeper understanding. It's deeper revelation. Um, even when we think about just like uh, me being primitive Baptist, growing up primitive Baptist, let me say it that way. Um, they um, nail him to the cross every Sunday and they at the end of every sermon they preach of about how he got up with all power right I don't get old like I don't want to just hear that on Easter I don't want to just hear that on Sunday I need to hear this every day I need to be reminded of this every day so in everything we do let us not forget his story like he was already giving me the word but sometimes it just it just be taking me some time okay so it's never going to get old and if you're in a place where you're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah I know mm -mm. it should always be exciting the gospel, the good news should always be exciting to you, okay? So this is going to be called New Life, Who This, and My Redeemer Lives. All right, so first things first. Sunday night, I told y'all I came home. I was like, no, I'm going to sleep. Like, I'm going to bed. I had a vision of somebody, like, in a grave, but, like, coming up out of the grave. Like, I could see a body moving in the grave. Me being me, I'm like, I know this ain't a ritual. Like, what's going on? I was like, I, I'm really, like, I just want to go to sleep. Like, so I went to sleep. That was Sunday night. Vision of a body coming out of the grave, moving around, coming out of the grave. Actual dirt. They were buried under there, covered by it, right? And, of course, my first thought is Lazarus, Jesus, right? And... I never want to get in a place to where confirmation not only or confirmation doesn't also excite me. I never want to be in a place to where I hear another prophetic voice or I encounter somebody and it's like, oh, God, you confirming that? I never want to be in a place where that doesn't excite me. So this had already been confirmed before I had wrote everything down. OK, so that was the first thing. That was Sunday night before I did the last live for y'all. All of that. All right. Woke up Monday, literally Monday. I woke up in a new season. I knew what he had been telling me. I knew what they had been telling me. I just didn't realize that that was going to start on Monday. I was like, whoa, right? But when I went into my office on Monday morning, it was cold in my house. But when I looked out the window, I was like, it's giving spring. I was like, what's the temperature outside? Like, why is it giving spring? Check the temperature. It's 30 degrees outside. But in my, but in my spirit, it feels like spring. I'm like, well, that's kind of crazy. Like, it's 30 degrees outside, but it's giving spring. That's how I felt. So he reminded me of beauty from ashes, which is a word he had me release probably over a year ago. Um, and then something new that he's spoken over to me and he told it to me on Monday in full bloom. Okay. In full bloom. I was like, okay, yeah, that's giving springtime. I got it. And let me just stop because I remember a previous season where we were entering into spring and it, I could feel it a little bit ahead of time, but I was still in classroom instruction things are changing you got to be able to look back over your life and thank god for the growth for the things that started blooming even if it wasn't the big big thing you wanted but it started growing he's been cultivating the land just like he had told us so that you could produce on fertile ground which is what he whispered to me on new year's 
I think it was New Year's Day. He was like, you're going to be fruitful. This is good ground. You're going to produce. And I was like, okay. Like, he whispered that to me. So, Inf of Bloom, Beauty from Ashes. God turned what you were buried under into fertile ground that will produce fruit. So, mind y'all, the night before, I'm having a vision of, like, a dead man, seemingly dead man, in a grave. But I knew he wasn't dead because he was moving. He was looking like he was going to get up out of there, right? And then the next day, he's telling me, in full bloom. God turned what you were buried under into fertile ground that will produce fruit. It looked and felt like death all around. I don't know what it's like to be in a grave, like an actual physical grave under dirt and stuff. I know what that feels like in my life, though. It looked and felt like death all around because even in the vision, it was dark. You get what I'm saying? But God, he's been having us do that a lot. There's a one version of but God where you recognize his sovereignty, his authority, his power. There's another version of but God. You're rebelling and you're not submitting. So one of the things is, look, y'all got homework. It's Coach Bay coming through. Look up verses about Jesus's resurrection. This is going to tie into the other words, okay? But we have no business not walking in that power, in that authority every single day, understanding that he is the king of kings, understanding that when he got up, that's why I get excited every Sunday when they preach it, because when he got up, it was with all power, and he is worthy to be praised. We should be bowing down at his feet. We should bow before the king. Okay, so look up those verses. Allow it to stir you up. That should stir you up every single day. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, Jesus came to give you life and more abundantly. So somebody caught on to the Avengers quote yesterday, right? I had posted, um, get back what I lost, keep what I found. That was an Avengers quote out of the movie. I, I've paraphrased it a bit, but that was out of the, the movie. I did watch Infinity War and Endgames recently. In Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, the enemy snap of death and destruction, that was Thanos. And it seemed like in every area, he had to get everything from every area so he could do a snap of destruction. But God, God has a snap of restoration and redemption. But God, the enemy could have tried to bury you, cover you with all these things, but God, he can restore and redeem that same land that they tried to bury you in, okay? When Jesus got up, it was with all power. Believing in him gives you access to the same death-defeating and life-giving, resurrecting power in every area of your life. It don't matter that the the witch is trying to do these graveyard rituals and spells and stuff on you. It incantation, it, none of that matters. It don't matter that the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. God is coming with resurrecting power, with redeeming power, with all power, with authoritative power over the enemy. He's coming in like that. And you have access to that power when you believe in it, okay? So the song he gave me was... Redeemer by Nicole C. Mullen. That's my jam. Like, who taught the sun? Have y'all heard that? Where to stand in the morning? Who taught the ocean? You can only come this far. And who told the moon where to hide till the evening? Damn, okay. So, Redeemer by Nicole C. Mullen. The tomb is empty. He, he's the master of it all. He conquered grave and death. He conquered the grave and death. It don't matter what the enemy tries to do. I'm sure the enemy thought Jesus was dead. He was not dead. He was not dead. And it was in that what it looked like that he got the keys to death, Hades, hell, all of that. He got the keys. He got the power. And our belief in him gives us the keys, okay? So... Remind yourself of this good news every day. Thank God for his story every day. The hardest part is truly believing, fighting, walking in worthiness, okay? Killing your past because in Avengers, Nebula literally had to shoot herself. Like the past version of herself that snuck into the future, she had to kill Shorty. Everything in that movie, all right? So walking in worthiness, killing your past, and receiving restoration, not just in one area, not just in one thing, not just at one time. Receive restoration and renewal every single day. 
you're in it. So you know how we was hearing those words, like you're in it, you're in it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're in it. As long as you believe and receive his strengthening and renewing power and love each day into your heart, into your mind, into your spirit. That is renewal. That is restoration. And as long as we continue to allow him to renew and restore within us, everything around us is going to continue to be renewed and restored and strengthened. You are in it. We need renewal in our minds, how we think. We need renewal in our hearts. Affecting how we trust and believe. We need renewal in our spirit so that we could be willing, that we could subject our flesh, make our flesh do what our spirit is saying. You're in it. You just have to choose to be in it, walk in it every single day. Really don't get old. It's timeless. All these words documenting this whole process for me, it could be hundreds of years from now. This is still going to be true. The gospel is still going to be true. Your testimony is still going to be true for somebody in their life. It's not going to get old. It's timeless. A tale as old as time. Because he was reminding me of Ancient of Days. And I was like, why are we hitting on Ancient of Days? Because he's trying to get my mind and my heart right. I was here before all of this. I formed all of this. Your purpose before all of this. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Like... I get turned up, but it's a new life. Don't get caught up in like that. It might have been a snap of destruction and defeat and death, but God and his authority and his power, it's another snap of redemption, resurrected. And when he got up, I got up. The dead in Christ will rise. When he got up, I got up. Period. Period. Point blank. That's the end of it. Like, there's nothing else to say after that. You got to choose that. We got to choose that every single day. So, new life. Who it is? Because I'm forever waking up in a new season. It's the craziest thing. <laughs> and my Redeemer lives. The tomb is empty. He lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I don't have to fear man. So, we're going to get to all these other words. Because he lives, I have something and someone that I can believe in. Because he lives, resurrecting power is all over my life because it's all over me when I choose to believe in that. He ain't stated. So you have that option too. He been highlighting that to me. Like we got options. We got choices. He didn't state it. And you don't have to. You just have to choose to believe.